Lord God. When we read the word, Lord God, help us to see these people, Lord God. Know that it's all real, Lord God. Jesus did die on the cross for us. He did get beaten up. He did take those stripes. And by his stripes, we were healed. And we thank you for him, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray you'll touch the next prayer vessel. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. As you stand to your feet, we give, the God, we give the Lord praise on tonight. For the Lord is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, our God is worthy. We honor the Lord on tonight. For it's in him that we live and move and have our being. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. As we're in our third night of consecration, our third night of a five-day fast, those that are watching by YouTube, we've been gathering here every night at 7 o'clock. We fast every single day from Monday to Friday. We've been fasting and we've been gathering here every night at 7 o'clock for an hour of prayer. And tonight I will be teaching. But I do honor the God of the Bible on tonight. I do honor his son, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen, amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I do honor the elders on tonight to my assistant, Elder Darden, to the youth pastor, Pastor Rich, amen, hey, to our ministers and missionaries. God bless them, to our deacons. I thank God for them, and thank God for our cancer-free deacon. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank God for Mother Walker. Amen. We had a scare last night, Elder uh, Brother uh, Jasper and Elder Cummins. I was going to go. They wouldn't let me go. Took uh, Minister Jones to the hospital to get his blood pressure down, but he's going to be all right. I told him to just relax. He's in church. He said, with your permission, can I come to church? I said, yeah, don't do security. Just sit down. Sit down. Blood pressure was through the roof after y'all left last night. And I thank y'all brothers, y'all two brothers, for looking out. Because, see, I was wondering if anybody else was going to say, Pastor, you need to stay home. We'll take care of that. I was just waiting. But I never heard it. So I thank y'all for taking upon yourselves to make sure this brother was fine. Pastor, he throwing shade. Now, no, you had an opportunity. And you should never let your pastor be the first one to jump and go do something. You should inconvenience yourself sometimes. Amen. So I thank God for Brother Jasper and Elder Cummins um, who helped Minister Jones last night. And last but not least, I thank God for my lovely wife, the first lady of the ministry. <laughs> She's something, ain't she, Adrian? We had a conversation in the back. We'll tell you about it, but your, your mama's something. Amen. I thank God for her. I thank God for all of you God's people. You, can, you might be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're in, we're in consecration, and I, I thought to not teach tonight just to do an hour of prayer like we've been doing the whole week. Those that haven't been here, you've been missing it. Those who haven't been here, you're disobedient. Those that have not been fasting uh, every day, you are disobedient. And, and you cannot expect the Lord to bless you when you've been disobedient and been out of place. And some people can't come here, um, amen, because of distance, but they've been fasting. But it's always good to be obedient, especially when God tells the pastor to start a fast. It's always good to be obedient when God tells the pastor to have everybody to be in prayer at 7 o'clock nightly because he wants to do something. Unless you were working or you were sick or something, you, you've been disobedient. And uh, those that are listening to me, you, you cannot expect God to bless you when you don't make sacrifices. When these other folk are make, making sacrifices and they're walking in obedience. And you can't make excuses about the kids, uh, your spouse, your vehicle. You can't make excuses when there's a mandate from God for the church to fast. I'm teaching y'all some things. You have to be obedient to the spirit of God. I'm not saying be obedient to me like I'm some great wonder. But the pastor called a fast. And if you haven't been fasting, if you've been eating and just doing what you want to do and you ain't sacrificing and you're not, you're not in place, you don't expect God to do what we're asking him to do. What is the Lord going to do? The biggest thing he's doing is working stuff out of us. Most of the time people want to go have a fast so that they can get this, that, and the other. But he's working things out of us. That should not be. And every member of Victory Temple Ministry, and see, this is how I know some are disobedient. They're not even watching it live stream. And you can't say that you are a good member and you're following leadership when there's a fast and you don't participate. You just can't. Because fasting is a spiritual thing. 
It's a spiritual thing, and we're sacrificing for the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Open your Bibles with me to Psalm 23. We want to go back to Psalm 23. There's a, there is a blessing in being obedient. The Bible says, believe God's prophets, preachers, and you shall prosper. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. So you got to be in place. It's real important that you're in place. Please, and people, people just dying to call me. They're not even in the fast, not even in church. And they're just dying to call me, telling me they need this and need that and the other. You, you could get what you need by being in the place and being obedient. Amen. Do you have Psalm 23? Psalm 23. I don't like to say a familiar passage of Scripture because we might have somebody here that just got saved, and it's not familiar to them. But the Bible says in Psalm 23, starting at verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord said, go to this psalm. Many times you hear prayers at a funeral or you hear scriptures read, and many times people won't preach from them because it sounds so familiar. But you don't ever hear people really dive into what the scripture is saying. This is a familiar psalm to most people. And even, even unbelievers that have been to any kind of church service, they've probably heard this psalm before. But this psalm, uh, we started it last week, and it's simply entitled. This is part two of The Lord is My Shepherd. The Lord is My Shepherd. This is a psalm of David testifying of the faithfulness of God. I will never understand. I'm standing. I'm not going to argue about it now. I will never understand people that have a problem with coming to church. Um, a pastor called me today that is a pastor um, in an area. He doesn't have a building yet. And him and another pastor were praying, and I came across their name, their mind, and they've been praying for me. And they said, you know, said, are you back in the church? And I said, we never left. And the first thing they said to me, not having achieved what this ministry has achieved. I'm going right back to this. I ain't, ain't lost my place. They said to me, now you do know we're supposed to be obedient to the officials. This is a pastor who has a church in his house. And I said, now let me go to Daniel on you where it says that the Antichrist will change laws times and seek to wear out the saints I'm not called he said because you know the, the the laws are up the laws of the land we have a mandate to follow them I don't have a mandate to follow the laws of the land if they don't line up with the law of God and I told you everybody want to give me advice I just, I, I, I answer the phone. It's just like one thing after another. I'm like, man, everybody got it figured out. It's everybody got it figured out, man. You're doing such a great job. Everybody got it figured out. And, 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 and my thing is, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He's the one that leads me. He's the one that leads me because the person said, now, you have to obey the law and you have to be safe. It's our job to keep everybody safe. And I was just thinking, man, get out the house. Get out the house. Because the Lord leads me. And that's one thing about being a shepherd. God in this, and David in this 23rd Psalm talks about the fact that the Lord leads him. One of the attributes of a good shepherd, which is God. This is not a pastoral teaching on myself being an under shepherd. This is telling us that even during this pandemic, even during everything we're facing, because 2021, 2021, 2021, yeah, it's 2021, right? 2021 is going to be rougher than 2020. I was watching the reports today. They said Biden is so far ahead. He's like, but I don't want to be, I don't want to jinx myself. I'm very superstitious. And I'm like, man, I don't care who's ahead of who. I like to throw out this political stuff every so often because everybody want to tell me what to do. One guy stopped today and 
in the driveway and white gentleman he said you in your church yet and he told me he said I'm up here at this church and we only are allowed to have about 15 or 20 because you know that's what the governor said and I said well you know I said I don't know if that's true or not I said we're social distancing but nobody's got the coronavirus here we are respecting the coronavirus but we're trusting in the Lord that says you know the pestilence sickness all of these diseases won't come nigh thee all of these viruses and all of these different things, he said, it won't come nigh thee. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling yourselves together. So I let the Lord lead me. But this gentleman told me today, white gentleman, y'all would like that, white gentleman in my neighborhood. And then I'm going to just tell you this last thing. When he left, he gave me a good piece of advice. He said, I want you to go online. I want you to listen to this preacher because he will really bless you. And I, I'm just telling I'm in the season now where everybody wants to tell me what to do. And I'm about to read my resume to him. I'm about to read it. Y'all don't know what reading your resume is, do you? That's a saying that Brother McPhail had when people push him in the corner. He said, now I have to tell folks sometime that I've been in business for 20-some years, that I played in the NFL, that you're not going to handle me in the county. I have to tell folks sometime I sat up under a man for 16 years. I gave a quarter of a million dollars in tithe and offering. I drove from Fayetteville to Raleigh and was in 7 o'clock ministers class without ever being late one time. I stood on my feet and did security. And I was at all the services. And I get, and the 250000 the quarter of a million that I'm talking about is only what the envelope said. That's not including going off and traveling. So I put my time in, and everybody feel like they just want to tell me what to do. But see, the Lord is my shepherd. And, and I'm going to start following some of these folks home that got all this advice. Because let me tell you something. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm just tying it in because I have days of frustration where people just want to call. It's just this season in my life where everybody's got advice for me. And, and everybody that got advice for me, none of them have a church this size or a ministry this large. None of them. And it takes somebody on a different level to even be able to tell me something. And I want to tell them all, even the ones that are listening, because let me tell you something. I want to say to y'all as members, when you start critiquing every word I say, you're no longer a good member. You need to leave because you're no longer able to receive, but I just become the conversation piece at home. That's when it's time to leave. When you've got it figured out and you and your spouse will do it a different way and you'd like to see the ministry go in this direction and I don't think we're doing enough of this or enough of that, why don't you, Einstein, take it upon yourself to start that department in the church since you know so much about it. Some of y'all might be wondering, why is this church doesn't have more mixed couples in it? Because it's up to the mixed couples. They got mixed friends. It ain't up to me to go find white and black folk. It's up to the mixed couple. Because many of you say, why don't we have more mixed couples in here? Go find mixed couples. Mixed couples. Preachers that want to preach so bad, have you witnessed today? Because everybody want to get behind here, but they don't want to tell nobody about Jesus in the streets. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm his under-shepherd. I'm letting him lead me. I ain't lost my point. Y'all probably say, what is he talking about on this fasting day? Sometimes during a fast, you have to correct things. Because I've been hearing a lot in my spirit, a bunch of conversations at home about how I'm leading. And I just want to say to you, when you've got it figured out and you discuss me and you cannot, you don't agree with me and I become the topic of, well, I, don't, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. It's time for you to really leave. And start your own because you can no longer receive. A good flock will receive from the under shepherd. Even when you don't understand what direction you're going in. Because let me ask you a question. If everybody here knew what I was going to do next before I knew it, what's the point of me being here? Because y'all be sitting in the pew saying, well, I know what we're going to do next. It's time to start your own. But I find out a lot of people just talk. They ain't got what it takes to go start their own. I know a whole gang of guys waiting for a leader to give them a church. They've been waiting for 30 years. But they know how to say doc and look smooth. No, they ain't started nothing. So you got to let the Lord lead you. Y'all probably say, where is he? He's all over the place. Now I'm talking about one of the attributes of this uh, shepherd, king, and host is lead us daily. This is why we're in the fast. So the Lord would give us direction. 
He will lead us. He will guide us and tell us everything we need to do. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I worked on my uh, deep. Um, I was told you've been driving the buses late, so I ain't even bother you today. But I trimmed all my Nelly Hollis today. I trimmed all my Nelly Hollis, and I about passed out. I was out there working, realizing that we fasting, and around the 2 o'clock mark, I was about gone. But I was out there just cutting the trees. And then the Lord gave me a refreshing during this fast. See, this is the reason why you got to fast and be obedient to the spirit of the Lord. Because there's a rejuvenation that I didn't even tell Amy. I was outside and I came in the house and I was just all giddy. And it's like the Lord touched me spiritually. Because he's leading us. He's he leading me. I, I'm not going to tell you to fast just for the sake of losing weight. Because that ain't going to work for most of you anyway. Because as soon as the Fat, the hour is over each day. You cramming your body full of everything. So this is not a fast to lose weight. This is a fast to draw close to God so that he can lead us because this is what he is. He's a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That is, he leads me. Psalm 77 and 20, he guides and leads us. It talks about Moses and Aaron, uh, the flock being led by Moses and Aaron, which was led by God. Psalm 78, I'm just reviewing from last week. The chapter, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. He's a leader. Psalm 77 and 20, God guided Moses and Aaron as they led his people. Psalm 78, 52 and 53, uh, God led the children of Israel safely as a shepherd would, even when they were, and they were, their enemies were overwhelmed by the sea. See, when you are spiritually in tune with the Lord, he will cause your enemies to be overwhelmed by the sea. He will cause those boss ladies and boss men that give you such a problem to be laid off. He will cause sickness and disease. He will cause all kinds of things on the enemy when you're led by God. So we see this, this is what happened um, in Psalm 78 and 52 and 53. We saw this last week. God led the children of Israel safe. And he overwhelmed the enemies by the sea. And I'll give you this back to you that I said last week. Just imagine being the children of Israel. You're nervous coming out of the land of bondage. And you're walking through the Red Sea. And you can see the walls of water on either side. That at any given moment could crush you. But the Lord stayed those walls of water until they got over on dry land. Because he led them. And then as soon as the last foot struck dry land. The sea overwhelmed the enemy. When you let the Lord lead you, you won't be carnal. I've been asking the Lord, work carnality out of me. Work, work out of me, Lord, uh, the fight that I have in me when folk threaten me. Work that out of me because it's not right to want to fight when somebody threatens you. And you have to really put the Lord on it. So this fast is allowing God to work things out of me. And when you let him lead you and guide you, everything will be all right. The B clause says, I shall not want. That is, I shall not lack. I shall not be in need of. We saw this last week in Psalm 103. The Bible says that the Lord made us and not we ourselves. And we are the sheep of his pasture. Because he made us, he'll take care of us. It's a bad thing to make something don't take care of it. It's a bad father that's a sperm donor that makes a baby and don't raise it. God ain't like that. God is not a baby daddy. <laughs> God made us. And because he made us, we won't be in need of anything. He will take care of us. Uh, Isaiah 40 and 11 says God feeds us. He feeds the flock like a shepherd. Then he carries in his bosom. And then he gently leads those with young. Philippians 4.19 says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Verse 2 says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Green pastures. Y'all ain't farm folk. I talked to one gentleman today, and he was like, man, I like you. You, you from uh, the country. And he said, man, I, he said, I, got, um, I got some land down at White Lake. And he said, I like you. I said, well, man, I'm from Sampson County. I'm from Salemburg. He said, Salemburg. He says, I go through there. He said, I might one day want to retire down there. And we started talking about country living. Of course, killing hogs came up. Because what folk do, y'all better leave that pork alone. He ain't going to be spinning. 
eyes going to be red. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. This ain't no Christian. I can, this ain't no Muslim thing. But keep eating it. Keep eating them slices of bacon. I'm telling you, it's killing you. You better let it go. There's a reason why God told him not to eat it in the Old Testament. Then everybody said, yeah, but this is the New Testament. This is the New Testament. He said slay and eat. Did you see Peter eat anything after he said slay and eat? That was a vision. That was a vision. Him telling him about the Gentiles and the food that the Gentiles ate. He slayed and ate in the vision. But you ain't never seen Jesus. Somebody tell me, you don't know what Jesus ate. I said, he ain't eat no pork. How do you know? I said, because he was a Hasidic Jew. And he followed the customs of the Jewish people, and pork was considered dirty. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You sang the song to be like Jesus. How you long to be like him. Yeah, how I long to be like Jesus and everything except for the pork. He didn't eat pork. Y'all might as well say amen. He didn't eat pork. He didn't walk around dizzy. From barbecue sandwiches from Smithfield. Let me just stay right here and make you mad for a minute. Because y'all ain't saying amen long enough. Let me just make you mad. Well, I'm going to eat my pork. Keep on bragging about it. We were at a family reunion. My Aunt Katie, she's dead and gone now. God bless her. But she sat outside in Clinton at the family reunion. I can't remember where it was at. It was under a shelter in Clinton. It wasn't Royal Lane, but it was another place. We went over there, had a big family reunion. She said, I'm going blind. I can't see. I can't see. They started praying. Uncle G and everybody laying hands and praying and spitting. She had eaten a whole plate of barbecue. And went blind. Her eyesight came back. Took a little vinegar and water. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying it. You, you want to be like Jesus, right? Find where he ate pork. Remember where he ate beef and filet mignon and all that. I can show you where he ate fish. Where he told the disciples, what'd you catch? Try me some. Fix me a plate. What Jesus told him. Jesus saw him on the side. He said, I'm back. Fix me something. He didn't say, give me no hog malls. I'm going to make y'all mad. I'm trying to move past this. But y'all got pork in your eyes. It's all in your eyes. Your nose look like a, like, like you want to just start snorting. Now, I'm, I'm trying to move past it. Trying, but y'all give me that old stank look. You pork eaters, you give me that stank look. You find me anywhere in the Bible where Jesus ain't pork. And I'll buy you a herd of hogs. And you can eat all you want. I got a cousin that know how to kill him down in Samson County. Chris probably watching me right now. If you buy a whole herd, he'll kill him once a month for you. I know how to kill him. Hang him up by the ankle. Split them open. After you scald them down, you got to scald them. You got to scald them, burn all the head. First, first of all, you got to kill them. How you kill them? You shoot them dead in the head. Or you take a sledgehammer and hit that joker dead in the head. He fall over. My brother Gasper raised, he had a hog and he raised him. And this is one of his funny stories about daddy. Ain't that something daddy? About our father. They don't even, I ain't, listen, I don't even know how to say daddy. But anyway, so y'all like, oh, oh, nothing. Uh, so Gasper, he raised the hog, and, and, and our father, he said, he said uh, you raised him, go kill him. And Gasper's like, dog, you probably want to know what he do. He killed him to keep from getting killed. <laughs> he said, you become friends of that hog. He said, go kill him. He's yours. You kill him, you scald him. Take all the hair off. Sometimes you eat them skins. Y'all know them hard skins. Y'all like have a little bit of hair still in them. All that, uh, sub, uh, sub, what is it, uh, uh, that, that, that skin right up under this uh, sub, uh, subcutaneous, that fat right up under that skin, that subcutaneous level, that fat is white, and it just drips. And y'all be like, it ain't good till you get the fat. And even, and even the animals that God told us to eat in the Old Testament, he said, don't eat the fat. That means your beef too. Oh, y'all ain't read that part in the Bible. Oh, y'all ain't read that part in the Bible. The only thing you've been reading is, uh, yes, Jesus loved me. Yeah. There's more to it than that. So let me get back to this. See, y'all took me there with your looks. <laughs> He's making me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures, a place of fancy. A place of plenty. When the pastures are green, uh, a lamb can eat, roll over, go to sleep, wake up, stretch, and eat again. You ever seen calf and lamb and sheep? Have you ever seen them in the fields? Me and Amy, we're going to get us some blackhead goats. 
from Africa. We're going to get us some African goats, and we're going to get us some miniature horses on our land down in the country. And y'all can come see them for a fee. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Pastor, I'd like to see that black-haired goat. Oh, you can come see it. It's going to cost you. <laughs> but, uh, but have you ever seen the sheep and goat? And, 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 and lamb and, and just the different animals in green pasture, the cows in green pasture. When you're in green pasture, you can eat all you want. It's a place of plenty. So in the natural, God is going to lead us to a place of plenty. How many want to be led to a place of plenty? Even during this fast, he's going to lead us to a place of plenty. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, the chapter of the Bible that scares me. All you naysayers that watch me. And I, y'all probably say, why he keep addressing them? Because people watching me. But, but what I want them to read is the whole chapter 33 and chapter 34 and see what happens when pastors keep stripping the saints down with their money. Don't, don't even let Pastor Rich say it. I want you to read it for yourself. Because God said, I'm going to get them. He said, I ain't going to let you feed my sheep no more. And I ain't going to let you feed yourself. And we see that during the pandemic. Now, God is drying up these pimps and, and, and pimps in the pulpit. That pimp, I get, what, what's a female pimp? She a pimp too, ain't she? Pimpette. These pimps and pimpettes that fly around and get paid. For preaching and start charge you three, four, five thousand dollars, and you got to pay for the airline ticket. Then you got to get them Fiji water, and then they got to come out and look like they're deep. I done seen it all. All of them fall in this chapter right here, chapter 34. When you got to bless the man of God all the time, chapter 34. All you haters, chapter 34. All you naysayers, chapter 34. We have because I don't strip the folk. And I don't take more than what should be taken. And this is what God says after he replaces those bum pastors and those bum preachers, those hirelings. After that, this is what he said he's going to do for his people. And let me tell you, God is doing it right now. God is purging the church. You know, Jamal Bryant, this Negro is in the hookah lounge smoking hookahs now. And y'all still think he's fine, single women. He's a black tadpole. <laughs> For those that don't know what a tadpole is, it's the animal, it's the, it's the amphibious uh, uh, reptile before it becomes a frog. Okay, well, Pastor, you shouldn't call him a, 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 a tadpole. Okay, he's a big-eyed frog. And he's, it's a shame. That he's sitting in a hookah lounge. Y'all know what a hookah lounge is? There are demons in these places. Jamal Bryant that took over Eddie Long, your own church. He don't get no break because he did. He was a sissy. You shouldn't talk about a dead man. He died because he was a sissy. He's a dead punk. <laughs> oh, there were tight shirts on, arms greasy, chest all out. And now, Jamal Bryant has taken over his church. They had this thing the other day. They had a picture of Jamal Bryant. He was chilling, and under the bottom, they had the song, Freaks Come Out at Night. Freaks Come Out at Night. But he wears his tight robe with his cross hanging way down here, and he tells you this right here. And then women be acting silly, and they getting pregnant one after another. He be like, who's the next clown I'm going to get? Because there's a bunch of silly women laden. And they go into the houses and leave the silly women ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. This Negro's in a hookah lounge. And then he says, you don't have to agree with black business to support black business. I'm like, Negro, I'm not going to support no hookah lounge. And then my brother Jamie prolifically said, um... Man, this blew my mind. I, I called him. When Jamie, when Jamie, see, today everybody, I text everybody, and I said, this is Jamal Bryant, who's at the United Holy Church, uh, at the Holy Convocation. He, he went to my former church. This is Jamal Bryant now. He, he's at the hookah lounge, and Jamie 
in only a Jamie Rich type way. After I, after I text my brothers and sisters a picture of this joker sitting up in the hookah lounge, Jamie said, and after he left the hookah lounge, he went to the hooker lounge. I called that joker. Whenever he, I said, now that's funny. I said, you all right? Can you talk? I said, now that's funny. He was like, he gonna say, I said, hold on, hold on, let me laugh. I said, this is funny. Dude, he left the hookah lounge and going to the hookah lounge. Pastor, why are you talking about this? Because chapter 34 talks about Jamal Bryant, Church of God in Christ, bishops, pastors, superintendents, Baptists, uh, non-denominational, all of them. It talks about all of them. And God's judgment is on the church. Even through this virus, people having to shut their doors. And then you can see the lame preachers, they don't want to open up their doors. I just want to know. Because this is my telltale test next year if I will take appointments or if I will bring anybody in. I'm going to ask them, did you close your church? Because if they close their church, I don't need to hear nothing about faith. Nothing. Some folks don't have but five members, they close their church. Now, you got five members, you could have a big service. You could have your folk 100 yards apart. Here you are with five members, you done shut down. You are sorry, no good you are sorry, no good hireling. Pastor, what does that have to do with chapter 34? Read it. Y'all don't believe me, do you? Let me read part of it to you real quick. Let me, I'm going to get down to the good part that I'm supposed to be talking about tonight. But let me read chapter 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. That is, preach against the pastors, the kings, and all the lanes. First thing he says, son of man, prophesy against. Some of y'all want me to go this direction. You want me to go that direction and go that direction. I prophesy and preach the word against even when folk don't like it. That's why you'll see folk, and it seems like it's on that side right there. I'm not talking about the membership, but it seems like visitors come on that side, and they holler and they carry on. Then they leave. Hey, for the next visitors we have, y'all sit them here or sit them there because that side ain't been successful. They'll come over there, they'll holler, preach, pastor, you better preach. Y'all, there was a woman a couple of weeks ago doing a bunch of hollering. I said something, she got right quiet. I said, well, she won't be back. All that hollering, all that hollering, we were preaching, all that, man, that don't move me. Man, we had two ladies, y'all remember them two ladies that came to the last church? Hey, you better preach, pastor. Pastor left the tea completely off. Had eyelashes way like this. They passed the church one day and looked me and gave me the mean mug. I said, I ain't running y'all off. I, don't get mad at me because one of your eyelashes weighed five pounds and, and it pulled your eyelid, eyelid down. Did all the hard, preach, pastor, preach, pastor. I started dealing with sin and they come back. Y'all be like, man, I want the church to grow, but people can't have, listen, folk come in here, Elder Cummins invited somebody one time and I started talking about shacking up. The joker quit coming. I didn't even know the joker was shacking up. You can't get mad at me because you shacking up. Let me, let me get to this right here. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them. See, these lames out here tell, telling everybody, you better not talk about my man of God. You better not talk about my man of God. What I'm going to do to you, you talk about my man of God. <laughs> ain't nobody exempt from being preached against when you ain't preaching nothing and when you pimping. Pimping. No time for no big pimping in the pulpit pimping. So what am I supposed to do? Get scared and not talk about Jamal Bryant and not talk about all these phony preachers, these preachers that lay with the women, these flirtatious preachers that tell every woman in church, girl, you better go on. I ain't told none of y'all that. I better be like, girl, you better go on. I ain't never said, girl, you working them heels today. Hey, you have no place. There's no business. You have no place doing that as a man of God. You have no place telling somebody. I remember when Sister uh, uh, Covington lost weight, and me and Amy talked about it. And Amy said, tell her. I said, I'm not telling her she lost weight. Brother Covington crazy. And then they, I don't want to tell her she lost weight because that's just not something that a pastor should say. And Amy's like, but it's cool to tell her. She said, tell her to encourage her. I said, hey, I see you lost weight. <laughs> it won't nothing, girl. You're working it. Nah. See, this this kind of pastors that are out there now. And they sisters too. Bisexual pastors. Half of these jokers that act like they so tough, they sissies. Bisexual. They like it both ways. Let 
Let me move on. The Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> let, 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 I, I, I'm sitting there. You know, I actually lost myself for a minute. I literally forgot I was here. I, I almost, I, I literally forgot. I, I went into a place for about 30 seconds. Let me get back. But look what he says. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. I know a whole bunch of them. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Flocks, plural. Not just one flock, but flocks. You eat the fat and you clothe you with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. This is what you call an offering for the leader every week. This is what you call an offering for the leader's wife, the leader's children. Uh, this is what you call special offerings just for the sake of blessing the man of God. It's right here now. Now get mad at the word. Try Jesus. Not me. <laughs> Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have you not strengthened. The member that might not even have enough money for an offering. You overlook that person. Never call their name. Never say anything good to them. Never have time to speak or entertain their conversation. Mm -hmm. Never set up an appointment for the diseased member. The one that needs help. Not the one that can offer you something. Y'all got quiet. Oh, they don't need to get quiet because that ain't me. Everybody that called me, that need me, I'm there. Period. Period. Here and outside the church. Y'all don't know me. Here and outside the church. Because it's called being humble. It comes from the Bible and it also came to Gatsy Rich who said be humble. Humble. Humble would get you somewhere in life. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and cruelty have you ruled them. You better bless me during my offering. And here's a team over here and a team over here and a team over there, and you better have enough money to meet what I want. Cruelty. Is what the Bible said. Y'all mad at me. Cruelty is what the Bible said. Preach, word of God, preach. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. I don't even know why the Lord's saying go this direction tonight. We're going to get back to it. But with force and cruelty have you ruled them. All you cats that's watching me that's going to give me a thumbs down, you stupid to give me a thumbs down because the man of God is abusing you or the man of whatever, can't be a man of God, abusing you, but you mad. I'm trying to keep some money in your pocket. I'm trying to help you, cuz. I'm trying to get you a down payment for a house. I'm trying to get you a down payment for a car. Come on, cuz. I'm trying to help you. This ain't no hate. I'm trying to help you. You can't have because you got to give it all away. Because with force and cruelty, these shepherds, which were prophets, preachers, and kings. Right now, they're talking about Joe Biden is going to be so great. They talked about Obamacare was so great. I don't know about y'all's Obamacare insurance, but ours went up $200 a month. So Obama must didn't care. Y'all ain't saying man in here. Maybe, maybe you in a different tax bracket or something. My insurance went up $200 a month. Obama didn't care. Trump didn't care because he'd been there for four years. He didn't care. And now Biden's talking about, I'm going to tax the rich. So that means you got to tax you and Kamala. 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 I don't care. So that means you got to tax yourself because you're rich. But right now, they're talking about taxing again. Joe Biden's plan is, they lie all the time. And you notice abortions don't come up not until election. 
Me and Amy were watching it a while ago, and now they're mad at the one that Trump is getting ready to appoint. And she said, I promise I will stick to the law and not my religious belief. She ain't got no religious belief. She's a Catholic, and they're not saved. You can't say Catholics ain't saved. They have to kiss the Pope's hand, and they have to go through their priest to get to the Lord. And they say, Hail Mary, full of grace, and they keep a whole bunch of secrets. And the priests like little boys. They get them sang on the choir, and then they sang them right on into the bedroom. But she says, I might not, I'm not going to let my religious belief do this, that, and the other. But abortions only come up during election. Because let me tell you something, all you right-wing Republicans, Trump ain't stopped abortion in the last four years. Obama didn't stop it in eight years. Who was it? Bush didn't stop it in eight years. Clinton didn't stop it in eight years. Ain't none of them stopped it. Republican, as Jesse Hams used to say, Republican. We used to hear a man on every, every evening would call us Negro. Y'all don't even know nothing about that. They used to be on Channel 5 News. In the evening, he would say Negro. He knew how to say Negro. Oh, he should have just said black. He said nigra. They let him pretty much call us nigga every week. And then black folks stood up for Jesse Ham. He's dead and gone. Dead and gone. He's stiff and stankin'. And he's dead and gone. I'm so glad he ain't here no more. He's dead and gone. He's dead and gone. Him and his boy, Strom Thurmond, that didn't like black people but loved black women. Didn't love black people at all, but boy, got all kind of babies from sister. He was like, I don't like niggers. Walk for me, girl. My wife ain't look. I've been married for 90 years, and my wife has been trying to get a butt for 90 years, but she, she just ain't got what you got. Y'all don't like me. So when these Republicans talk all this abortion mess and we want to do this, that, and the other, ain't none of them stopped it. Ain't none of them stopped it. And so you, you got the kings. The presidents, the leaders, the Lord said, preach against them. Ezekiel, preach against them. Prophesy against them. The disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you brought again that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and cruelty, pastors, but with force and cruelty. And let me tell you how it's disguised. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you're out of the will of God. Okay, pastor, have you ever been out of the will of God? You still around? They use scare tactics. Scare tactics. I never tell y'all you're out of the will of God, not unless you uh, uh, cussing and swearing and smoking and drinking. When you bring ideas and stuff to me, I said, let's pray about it. Now, if you ask my real opinion, you know, I'm not going to marry nobody that I don't think should be married. After I counsel you and everything, you might have to go to the justice of the peace because I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling it. But I never use scare tactics to tell y'all anything. I never use scare tactics to raise an offering. I never use scare tactics to tell you, I wouldn't do that. You better not go on vacation. Because if you go on vacation, you're out of the will of God, you're going to have a car wreck. I'm like, man, go. Enjoy your family. I used to be at church, man. And I'm going somewhere. Y'all probably think I took a side note, which I'm working my way to the text. I used to be in church, and we were told, come to church, rain, snow, sleet, or hell. And I'll never forget, I came from Fayetteville to Raleigh one time in the snow. And my wife said, D, you shouldn't go. I said, I got to go. And went in the church, and we were supposed to be getting out early, but we didn't. And when I got out, I had my F-150. It was red back then. That bad boy ready. Had my F-150. And I'm like, I can go through this snow. And I got right up there in Garner. Where the road splits, 401 goes this way, and he can go this way to keep going to 70, I think. I got right there, and I hit it, and I spin, and I almost lost my life. And this is why when we have bad weather here, I counsel church. Because I was pretty much made to come. Pretty much told you a leader, you just need to be in place. With cruelty and with force. I know folk mad at me right now. But I'm preaching the word of God. You don't handle God's people with cruelty. And with force. Because I just told you Psalm chapter, Psalm 103 said, God made us. And not we ourselves. Nor the pastors over us. 
We're the sheep of his pastor. We ain't bought no land for no pastor. How many of y'all got a pastor in here? You got a thousand acres of green pastures. All right. We ain't got no cowboys in here. They have one. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. People have been considered what is called church hurt. I don't play into a bunch of church hurt, but church hurt is real. When the pastor screw you, literally, male or female, and your mind get messed up and you never want to come back to church, you scattered. Man, there's so many guys I know now that I came up with that have backslidden. And it's not my job to save them, but I'm trying to get in touch with several of them. Some have been here and preached, and they're no longer with God. Things scattered them. And it's, it's a hurting thing to see your brother you got ordained with, to see the brother that you did your initial sermon with, and they, is, they are as far in the world now, further in the world now than they were when they first got saved. All on Facebook drinking. Wives got no clothes on, alcoholic beverages, divorced, separated. They've been scattered. I told somebody yesterday, yesterday or today, I said, there's more responsibility on the pastor and leader than there is anybody else. The Bible says you take this upon yourself to be a teacher. And if you take this upon yourself to be a teacher, you'll be held to a higher standard. That's why I don't play with y'all, and I preach the word of God, even though it might get, make, make you mad, and even though you might be here for a season. When you leave here, the only thing that you'll be able to say is, he made me mad, but he did preach. He ain't sleep with me. He ain't steal my money. So why did you really leave? Because I was in sin, and he called out sin. And then some of y'all think, he should have just been a little more careful with her. Man, she's a hooker. Can't be careful with no hooker. You can't, can't be meeting with no hooker. Tell me, just tell me your problem. Y'all ever seen, uh, what's that movie with Sharon Stone in it? Indecent. Basic Instinct. You remember that episode? You remember that part of that movie? She came sat in that chair. She crossed them legs. Dude was done. For y'all that don't know about it, I'm old. That's an old movie. I can't lie, that happened in the office. No, sir. No, sir. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, everybody that's watching me that's hating, hear the word of the Lord. Those of you that have been mad and want to tell me what to do, hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, God says, as I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Jamal Bryant, hear the word of the Lord. Church of God in Christ. Hear the word of the Lord, man worshiping church of God in Christ, worshiping men more than worshiping God. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds. And if God is against you, I don't care what kind of offering you get. It's just a matter of time before you go down. He told Ezekiel, preach to these preachers. Y'all want me to preach something nice all the time. Get you a house and a car. This ain't the time for a house and a car. Get you a house and a car by getting your credit right and go buy one. But this ain't the time for the body of Christ to be playing games. And then you got this mission and that mission and we're just going to do this. We're just going to do that. Nothing covers ministry. Nothing is more important than minist in ministry than the preached word. I don't care how many auxiliaries you have, how much you plan on doing, nothing trumps the preached word. He said, preach against them. Hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast, 
of the field because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. Uh, when the Lord asked me, did I do right by y'all? I'm going to be able to say, yes, sir. I I'm going to be able to say, yes, sir. This is about me now. This is about Dwan Rich now because ain't a pastor in here. He says, I will require my flock, all those people that you took all that money from, that you used, that you put down, that you belittled, that you took your last dime, that you just pimped the folk. God's going to get you. That's why they're dying now. That's why the preachers dying left and right. They're dying left and right. They are dying left and right. God's tired of it. And they're still trying to get virtual money. You dummies, you better wake up. This ain't in the scripture that I'm trying to read. I'm working my way to it. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them. Check this out. No more offerings. Look at your neighbor and say, no more offerings, no more anniversaries, no more pounding, no more district meeting, no more this, no more that, no more getting rich. I, I'm loving the pandemic. If it kill me, I'm going to heaven. But I love the pandemic because it's drying up you pimps' money. You no work and ain't got no kind of career, don't know how to do nothing outside of pimping folk. Ain't never owned no business. You a hustler. Who was that rapper said, I'm a hustler, uh, I'm a hustler. Y'all know who it was, who was it? Cassidy, thank you. Don't act like y'all don't know who it was, it was Cassidy. Y'all know who, I'm a hustler, I'm a hustler. Uh, I, I knew that because of the barbershop, they love Cassidy. I'm like, who the joke about that tall? I'm like, you ain't no hustler, you're a midget. <laughs> Shut your mouth trying to be tough. But he's hustlers. Look what God said. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm working my way, I'm talking about a shepherd. I'm, I'm in, I'm in. See, the Lord is leading me different, and he's going to lead me right back to it, but the Lord is my shepherd. You need to know, YouTube, and I don't have millions of followers and all of that, but hopefully the church is telling folk about the word of God. You need to know, YouTube, it's time to stop being pimp. An article just came out, a black woman. That's an article. It's called The Black Exodus from the Church. And you know the reason why black folk are leaving the church? They said because the pastors are not talking about racism nor COVID-19. I'll get, I'm, I, I should have told you to put that up. It's a great article. It's talking about pastors are not talking about racism or COVID-19. And then as I continue to read, there's a black woman who goes to a white church who's been at that church since Trayvon Martin got killed. And she's just waking up now. I'm like, close this article up. You know how I many folk done been killed since Trayvon Martin? And you sent up on a white man because, and now you want to write an article about it. You mad because he don't talk about racism and he don't talk about COVID-19. And then y'all don't want me to talk about racism. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. Just as sure as the Lord give me a voice and wind in my throat. Because this non-preaching will get your soul lost. And I don't want God taking my ability to minister. I'm telling y'all, I love what I do. I get weary sometimes, trusty wood. I get tired. Sometimes I don't even feel like coming to church. But it's something about that corner right there. When I start walking up them steps and open up that door and see the crowd, and I know I've prepared. It's something about getting the word of God out to the folk. But look what he said. Thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require uh, my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Check this out. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. All that virtual offering they're trying to get, boy. Time's winding up. I hope you saved real good. You got all these evangelists out of Florida and everywhere else mad at the church of God in Christ, but you weren't mad when you was flying around getting that money. You weren't mad when you were getting that paper, and you knew everything that was going on then when you were getting that paper. Now I'm going to say you want to call everybody out. Y'all was all in it together. Yeah, they were. Man, these preachers are freaks. These guys be having naked parties. These guys are freaks. They ain't pastors. And that's why he said preach against them. Y'all just don't know, man. That's some shady, 
customers out here. There's some shady customers out here that ain't fit. This is why before I become shady, Lord, we're going to have a fast. The Lord might have made me go on a fast this week so I wouldn't become shady. See, fasting to keep you spiritual. And we ain't finished. We got tomorrow and Friday. Y'all go on a fast now. Listen, and the fast starts when you go to sleep tonight. Don't get up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, go in the refrigerator. And don't get up at no 5.59 before 6 and load up. That ain't what kind of party it is. You go to bed tonight, and you wake up, and you go till 3 o'clock, and you drink water. If you're sick, you need to eat. If you're pregnant, you need to eat. But it's an affliction of the soul. I broke out in a sweat today. I was outside cutting those Nelly Hollers, and I broke out in a sweat. I said, Lord, I feel like I'm about, I'm about like Esau. Esau was out in the field, and uh, he came to Jacob. He said, I'm about to die. He said, give me some of that, that porridge. Give me some of that potted meat. I came in there and look, and Amy gonna wait till three minutes to three to start cooking. I said, didn't you know three o'clock was coming? I said, oh man, I was hot. She said, oh, you get ready to argue? And then I had to be a little easy. I'm like, you ain't been to cook nothing in three minutes, but let me tell you what I've been eating at the end of the fast. We've been eating, we've been eating pancakes and eggs and grits. You know, there was a time when chicken was my favorite meal. There was a time until the chicken breast became that big. Man, I'm so in love with grits right now. Mm, 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 mm. If I can just, see, y'all ain't saying amen. If I can just have me some pepper and just a little bit of salt and, a wa- and some water. Oh, I, I can live off of grits. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, I got to have, listen, my, hey, listen, we don't even have, we went from bacon to turkey bacon and grits and eggs. I told Amy, get rid of the turkey bacon. All I need is eggs and grits. And then she got a little jiggy with it the last two days and cooked a pancake up there. I put that stuff on there today. So that's what we've been eating. But she waited till three minutes till. And I felt like I was going to faint. And I'm like, you know, you know, come on now. I mean, it ain't like 3 o'clock slipping up on you. I mean, I, I'm trying to, you know, I'm sitting there trying to argue, but I got to go easy. Because you know we don't have no snacks in our house. Ain't no need even walking in the pantry. You just walk up there and look. I'll be in there. I'll be just arguing. I'll be like, Lord, you know her. You, Lord, you, I'll be talking to Jesus. And then she'll say, but you told me you want to eat healthy, D. So ain't nothing in there. So I had to sit there and wait. Well, there was one thing. There was a banana sitting over there. Soon as 3 o'clock hit, 3 o'clock in one second, I hit that banana. I said, can you hand me the banana? She said, you can reach the banana. I said, you know what? You know, this, this fat, you're going to be fasting a little bit longer. I said, the banana's right there, Amy. I had to have something in me. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to close tonight. I'm ready to close. So thus said the Lord, of, thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver through the coronavirus through the church waking up, to people, to, to people stop, uh, starting to, their, spirit, their spiritual minds are starting to wake up and say, you know, I need to quit giving this leader all my money. It's to the point God said I would deliver. Now, you can't deliver, not unless you're in bondage. Look what he says now. I will deliver my flock. There's a lot of these members that are under a spell, and God is delivering. His flock. That's why I'm careful how I treat you. Oh, I'm going to preach the hard word of God. I'm going to preach God's going to bless you and all of that. But I'm not going to abuse you. Because if you've never read it before, chapter 34 is scary for a preacher. Instead of you jokers watching me hating every week, you better read this. And you better get out of the church. Because you're the captain of raising the money. So you are guilty by association. You aiding and abetting. He says, I will deliver my flock from their mouth. From their mouth. Joker's eating them. That they may not be meat for them. For thus said the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. He said, I'll find them. As a shepherd shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, 
that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. And here's the verse that I wanted to read from the very beginning, but I wanted to show y'all that chapter 34 is a scary passage for any kind of leader, any kind of pastor, any kind of shepherd when it comes to watching over and taking care of God's people. He says, I will feed them. And this is when, it, you know, Psalm, Psalm uh, 23 says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Ezekiel says, I will feed them in a good pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold. You shall just lie down. And in a fat pasture, that is a rich pasture, a dark green, rich soul. Healthy food. In a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. And check this out, verse 15, and we're going to go back to Psalm 23. I will feed my flock, and I will cause, cause them to lie down, said the Lord God. God's going to give a lot of his church membership rest. I am so glad. If there's anybody in here from the time this church started to now, feel like I get your money. You've got to be bipolar or schizophrenic because I've never raised a second offering except for when we sent some money to Haiti and when one of the members' mother's house burned down. We have never raised a second offering. Never in 14 years. We've never done it, and God is still blessing. Watch that instead of a thumbs down. Watch that because that will help you. We have never raised a second offering. Do you remember one? Do you remember the Lord moving on me and saying, the Lord is saying, seal this, seal this, seal this anointing. Man, do you know that's a lie? Oh, the prophets would seal every time the prophet would come, he would get an offering. Well, you've already got it. You're on payroll. You get the shouting and bucking, and you know that another offering's coming. All of a sudden, you come out the spirit. No more shouting. No more hallelujah. The pen has been stuck into the balloon, and all the energy is gone. Y'all might say, man, he's just throwing shade tonight, this, that, and the other. No, the Lord is my shepherd. And when I get up here and preach, I'm not apologizing to you or any people that are watching me, but this is the direction that he took me in just to get me to verse 14 and 15. And maybe somebody needed to hear it again tonight. Maybe you pre preachers in here that's going to one day be a pastor need to hear it. Because God says you're going to be accountable. And he's going to require his flock at our hand. That's something, man. That's why I said, Lord, take me out of here before I, I, I do your people wrong. That's a scary thing. The Lord is my shepherd, not a man. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You're supposed to be able to come to church. You're supposed to be able to walk with the Lord in a way of being calm. Church ain't supposed to be stressful to you. Church ain't supposed to be stressful to you. Church ain't supposed to be stressful to you. And that has everything to do with the shepherd. Now, y'all can't say it's stressful to me because you're talking about racism. That's because you just don't want to hear it. It ain't stressful to you when you're getting your blessing. When you, when you, when you live in the total Christian life, the total Christian man, Amen. Amen. Your mama ain't tell you she love you every day, did she? Your mama ain't kiss you every day, did she? You got a whipping every now and then, didn't you? Well, don't you think she still loves you? Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all mama ain't love y'all? Y'all mama ain't love y'all? He leadeth me beside the still water. Let me do verse 3, and then we're going we're gonna to close for tonight, and we're going to go back into tomorrow night's prayer. Verse 3 says, he restoreth my soul. That is, he brings back my soul. That is, he refreshes me. A good shepherd will refresh the sheep. This is why God sends words. He'll send Elder Wilson, he'll send a series on sin 
and then he'll have me right in the middle of it come back and say, God's going to fight your battle. So he refreshes you in the middle, but he ain't going to have us to just sit there and drink water all day. You know, too much refreshing, you'll die. You know, guys from New York used to come down. They worked in the tobacco field with us, and we get them. Y'all done heard this story before. You don't want too much water. Them guys come from New York, you know, they don't like Brother Pride. Brother Pride cool, but they won't like him. You know, a lot of my guys come back, what up, man, and all that, and we get them on the back of that tobacco harvest. It's we tell man, drink some water, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, drink a whole bunch of what's going to be hot today. Too much water make your stomach swell. They be out there laid out, boom. I be like, go back to New York. You come out here being cool. You can't come out here in this field doing all that right there, Charlotte. That right there, you got, you got to get dirty in the tobacco field. And we used to give them that water, that, that cold water start bubbling on their stomach. So we don't want the Lord to refresh us all the time. We want the Lord to work stuff out of us. And actually, he's refreshing us through this fast. And it hurts to get stuff out of us, naturally and spiritually. It hurts to get stuff out of us. And that's what he's doing. But David said, he restoreth my soul. A good shepherd, after he leads them uh, uh, by still waters, will let them drink some of the still waters. Water refreshes you. Don't y'all fall in love with Gatorade, uh, uh, energy drinks, full throttle, uh, five-hour energy. Oh, this good right here. It's got natural stuff in it. Really? You really think five-hour energy got natural stuff in it? And it picks you up. You would like this right here, and it picks you up. Now you're starting to move. Your heart about to bust. You're going to be going to see Jasper. You better fall in love with water, every one of you. You better fall in love with water and that tastes like water. Every time you turn around, you got to put something blue or green in it. My wife was like that for a while. She had these little things around the house, and we, we started getting hooked on them. She's just a squirt in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Them little small things, you take the top squirt in there, the water turned blue, red. I'm like, this Kool-Aid. It's Kool-Aid. Water will refresh you. They got a little stupid commercial out now that said, we have made water better. I can't remember what it is, but they said, we've made water better. I'm like, ooh, really? You made the source of life? That God gives us better by putting flavor to it, by putting something in it? Waters. He said, he restored my soul. That is, he brings back my soul. Look at Hosea 4 and 16. God feeds the backslider. Hosea 4 and 16. Hosea 4 and 16. Y'all know where it is? It's right after Daniel. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. You only had to move over two books. Hosea 4 and 16. The Bible says, Hosea 4 and 16, for Israel slided back as a backslidden heifer. See? See, ain't nothing wrong with heifer. See? 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 I'm, I'm in the book. See? See? For Israel slided back as a backslidden heifer, a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. The Lord restores. That is, he brings back. The Lord knows how to take care of those that are lost. If you have a lost loved one, I'm talking about lost in sin. If you know a backslidden person, keep praying for them. I got a gang of guys right now I'm praying for. Real dudes that got saved and backslidden. And I'm working on one right now in particular. And I'm praying and working on them. These men knew how to handle the word of God, how to carry the word of God, how to preach like nobody's business, but they're in backslidden conditions. I got, I got a search out on one right now. Uh, my sister is trying to get them on Facebook because I've got to talk to him because this dude had the word of God in his mind like I haven't seen. Him and Elder Cummins on different levels. Y'all said, he done called Elder Cummins' name twice tonight. Don't, don't get mad at Elder Cummins. Study the word. If you don't know how to find the scripture, study the word. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, you call the name one or two times and he can get in trouble. But bottom line is, you know, if I ask him where something is, he, he be like, oh, that's in uh, uh, Zephaniah chapter 3. Y'all ain't know that. You don't even know how to get to Zephaniah. And y'all probably be like, thank you, Elder Cummins. But this other brother, this brother was sharp. And he knew the word of God. I'm telling you, when I say sharp, man, you envy certain things. Not to just be jealous, but you should envy a gift that God has given somebody, not to the point that you're jealous or mad or angry with them, but you're like, man, I wish I could do that. 
and it should cause you to want to study more. Not to beat that person because you got to understand they're gifted in that area. You can't have all the giftings. You can't be the best prayer, the best preacher, the best teacher. You remember we had them at the last church. We had these women fighting over Sunday school. Well, my daddy was a superintendent of Sunday school. Well, I was the superintendent of Sunday school. I said, oh, ladies, oh, 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 oh. And then another reached over and touched up. I said, now, you shouldn't have touched her. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, cat fight, cat fight. I'm like, Lord, I'm going to get scratched up on both sides of my head. I said, let's pray. And I kept my eyes open. Then they started over, arguing over flowers. Then they started arguing. They, you can thank them. We don't have fifth Sundays eating no more. They started arguing who could cook the best. I said, I tell you what, you won't put no roots on me. How about we don't eat no more at the church? Y'all don't believe in that, do you? Keep eating everybody's pie and cake and chicken wings and bake this and bake that and macaroni this and macaroni that, and it's just made for you. Yeah, buddy. It's, I told you now, y'all don't got tired of me talking this, but my, I, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> the three bridges in Roseboro. My brother Gasper <laughs> had got a big tub of barbecue. And him and Trina, my sister-in-law, she was down from Asheville. She was new to the Christian thing. And she was just so glad that this woman gave her that tub of barbecue. Mama sitting in the back, she said, where did it come from? Gasper told her where it comes. She said, take me to the three bridges. Go by the three bridges. Mama says, stop right here. Let it swim. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't be eating, I don't be eating red ravioli while I'm dating. It's time, it's time to go. We, we fasting. I might, I might need to go get some food. I might be just getting crazy. But see, that's the way I was raised. <laughs> Jasper will tell you. Brother Jasper will tell you. And he ain't the only one here. Trusty Whitaker know what I'm talking about. Mother Walker know what I'm talking about. I ain't crazy, am I? People feed you. You be howling at the moon. I got a cousin who used to howl at the moon. I, I'm not making this stuff up. That joke came out of, oh! And they had, they had to get some help for him. <laughs> it's time to go. It's time to go. They, they, they're probably saying now on YouTube, that dude has lost it. So God says in Hosea 4.16, give me a few more minutes. He says, I will feed the backsliding. God knows how to restore. Look at Luke chapter 15, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 1, talking about the lost sheep. The Lord did a parable. Man, I love reading Jesus' is writing. For all of y'all that think I'm hard and I'm tough and I'm mean, I want y'all to read everything in red. Because he used to go off. I wonder if Jesus even smiled. Uh, yeah, I do know he smiled. He smiled when the little children came. Because when the little children came, he gave them the kindest look. But you don't see him smiling with his disciples, with the Pharisees. You don't see him smiling at all. You see him going in. And they always had something smart to say to try to trick him. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eat with them. They said, This man is friendly with sinners. He shouldn't be friends with sinners. And he eats with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep? Look how he said it. He didn't come off easy. He, they come telling him, why you hanging with the tax collector and the sinner? I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't drink and I don't smoke. But some of my closest friends do. And when I get around them and just talk to them about ideas and stuff, I'm trying to win them by the way that I talk to them. But I don't just come at them with the Jesus, 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 Jesus. I, the Bible says he that wins souls is wise. And you might need to make a friend of a sinner. You might need to make a sinner friend. One of your hunting buddies that won't come to church. Talk to him about his rabbits. Say, man, you, you, man come to church with me. One of your cussing friends on the job. Man, come, come to church with me. And let me tell you something. Don't be so offended when they cuss. Because I got guys down in Fayetteville, they cuss like breathing. They can't help it. Minister Farrar heard one over the phone one time. He was like, Pastor, good Lord. He was like, it, 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 he, he, he heard him over the phone. Minister Farrar like, oh, my God. And I said, yeah, man, he, he, he'll ride or die, dude. He liked me, man. But he greets me with a cuss word. And he calls me a cuss word. Now, y'all wouldn't be able to handle it because I'm your pastor. <laughs> but he calls me that. And I'll call him tomorrow and see how he doing. Because I've been working on him. He sent me a picture of him in church. And I'm like, for real? 
Ain't talking about, boy, look at them shades. Boy, you know what kind of shades? Them are, boy, them things cost me $700. Look at that suit, boy. I said, man, what about your heart, man? I'm glad you went to church. But he just went in there <laughs> to show his suit off and his glasses. He had to pose him in the front of the church like this. I said, you didn't get saved today. But I'm still praying for you. Let me read this and we're done. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth on his shoulders rejoicing. See, that's why even folk that have left this church, I'm not into killing your relationship with people that have left this church only if they're killing this church. But if people leave and they're in sin, you should talk to them. But if they leave because they don't like what the pastor said and you're still their friend, you might want to cut them loose because eventually if you keep entertaining them, which I don't understand why you would, they're going to convince you. But we are to find those that are lost. We are to leave the 99 and find the one. A good shepherd restores. He brings back. That's what a good shepherd does. Whenever Ahmad walked in this church, now I love all my members, but right now I've been in a happy space because you're here. When I see you and your girlfriend, y'all still together, right? Okay, because she ain't with you tonight. Okay, she with you last Sunday. Just making sure, but keep her. Because she came to the altar, she seems to be loving God. When I saw Ahmad come to the church, it made my day. It brought me to tears. When Ahmad called me and reminded me of stuff he heard when he was a boy. Because Ahmad had been with me a long time. But he strayed. And he told me, I could hear you while I was out there doing dirt. I get a little choked up now about it. Because you don't understand a pastor's heart. You think you know, but you don't know. You don't know. But this is how Jesus felt. When he found the one, he grabs him. He embraces him. When he, grab, when he finds the one, he puts it on his shoulder. That's a good shepherd. He puts the sheep on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise, likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than 90 and nine just persons which need no repentance. That's why you can't look down on nobody. You can't look down on nobody. Your, your nephew, his mind, he comes to my mind all the time. I don't know what to do to get him to this church. And way before there was a minister Jones, way before different ones in this church helped, your nephew helped lay the towel where me and him spent time together. See, see, y'all don't know. I think about this dude all the time. There's not a time I don't ride by his house. I don't think about it. And I know he's deep in sin. Deep in sin. I'm sitting there saying, maybe one day. Why do you say before there was a Minister Jones? Because this guy was kind of like Minister Jones. Not on the level of Minister Jones, but he helped me do a lot of stuff. He did a little bit of illegal electric work. Did a little illegal HVAC work. Lay a little tile. Paint the wall. I said, man, he said, Pat, it's a short dude. I ain't going to call his name. I ain't called him that. I feel like crying. I'm telling you. Little short dude. Me and him the same age. I think about him all the time. If I could just get him to this church, and some of y'all know who I'm talking about, just tell him I love him. And he knew I love him. Sin is the reason why he ain't here. But you got to rejoice over the 90 and 9. You got to rejoice over the one more than the ones that are in here. Right now, it's my time to just enjoy him. Now, it's going to wear off after a while. I'm going to still enjoy you. But I want somebody else to come back. There ain't going to be no trouble. Now, some troublemakers that have left, we don't want to see them no more. Mm, we don't want to see them no more. <laughs> I made up about three or four songs tonight. Well, you know, I, th I guess y'all think that fast is making me crazy. It might be. It might be. But I'm going to tell you, you got to love people. A good shepherd loves people. I, I went into the shepherd as far as the king, as far as the pastors, because God is tired of it. God is tired of it. Virtual offerings, virtual anniversaries, virtual convocations to get that money. But one thing I know about black folk, 
because I'm black. <laughs> For a season, they'll give that tithe and offering online. But after a while, because my sister told me, she said, I watched you preach the other day. I said, I hope you had some clothes. She said, I have my house coat on. I said, Sabrina, don't watch me no more with your house coat on. You're getting too comfortable. Now, she's sitting there with a house coat. She's a tithe giver. Now, what about those? She's at her church. Now, what about those that ain't even get up and took a bath yet? They sitting there watching the preacher. You know what's going to happen next week? Man, I ain't got time for this. I'm getting ready to go out. And you know what's going to happen after that? Why am I sending tithes and offering? It's going to wear down. It's going to wear off. God's people need to be led as he gives us the word to lead. And we are to lead and, and do right by y'all. Say amen for the word of God on tonight. I know y'all be feeling like I go in. And then I tell y'all some of my past experiences, but y'all feel like I be going in sometimes. I do go in on pastors that pimp you. Because they shouldn't pimp you. 